So, an attempt is being made to to distinguish between yoga and Vedanta. You know, so many people confuse between the two. So, he is, some comments are being made on that. So, Sushuptau Tat Hi Liyate. The mind itself indeed resolves itself. Liyate resolves itself in, in Sushupti Avastha. And what does that mean? That duality, Dvaitam disappears or seems to disappear in Sushupti Avastha. But we should know that it is only a seeming disappearance because when you come out of the Sushupti Avastha, Dvaitam is back. Therefore, Dvaitam, when you say Liyate disappears, you have to take it as it seems to disappear but is present in a potential state. In an unmanifest state, it is present there in Sushupti Avast. Okay, then what about, so this is the Sushupti Avastha, the state of the mind. What about the mind which is focused? So, Nigrahitam that, that mind which is focused, naliyate, that mind does not become dormant. It does not become uh, resolved. But in that mind also, what is being said is that in Sushupti Avastha, the mind disappears. Therefore, Dvaitam seems to disappear. But in this focused mind, the mind which has been focused through years of Shravanam and Mananam, that in that mind also, na liyate, even though the mind does not become resolved, Dvaitam has disappeared. Why? Because Dvaitam has been dismissed as Mithya. Right? So in the first state, in Susrupti Avastha, Dvaitam has resolved. It has become as if Nashaha, as if destroyed. But in this focused mind, Dvaitam is Badaha. It has been negated, gone for good. And therefore he says, Tadeva Nirbhayam Brahma. That mind, that Jnani's mind, the Jnani understood that the mind is nothing but the fearless Brahman. Nirbhayam Brahma, that mind also is. Which means what? The mind is nothing but Brahman plus Name and form. What is the form over here? Sukshma Shariram. So Brahman plus Sukshma Shariram, which is called name mind or Sukshma Shariram mind. This is nothing but Brahman itself, the Jnani is understood. It is only a perceptual change. The mind doesn't really disappear. Duality doesn't really disappear. And Jnana Lokam Samantataha. So Jnana Lokam samantataha, consisting of the light of awareness. So, alokaha is light. So, here you have to understand it as the light of consciousness. That very same mind is Brahman. And that mind which has 
which is constantly creating problems for us, when we are perceiving duality, that mind will never create a problem for a jnani because the jnani has negated the entire universe plus the mind as mithya. And where is this mind? He says samantataha. Samantataha means all pervading. Right? Thus in the jnani's vision, everything is the mind. Everything is, and we said the mind is nothing, nothing but Brahman. So in the Jnani's vision, everything is Brahman. The world is Brahman, body is Brahman, mind is Brahman. And there is only one Brahman, nothing else is there. When duality is not there, who will harm whom? What is there to be feared from whom? There is nobody to be afraid of. So what is being mentioned here, what is being brought out here is the idea that a mind in Sushupti Avastha is free from problems. Um, the Jnani's mind is also free from problems. What is the difference? The mind in Sushupti Avastha is free from problems temporarily. Why? Because it is there the potential vasanas, the seeds of the problems have not gone away. Thoughts born from ignorance, avidya, adi, panchaklesha, they have not gone away, but they have been resolved for the time being temporarily in the karma shariram because of the tamasic state of sushupti avastha. For jnani, also, the mind that creates no problem, mind is not there, but for the jnani, the first klesha, so if you remember panchak, uh, this pancha kleshas from Yoga Sutra, what is the first klesha? Avidya. Avidya. And avidya is the seed klesha. Everything else is a product only as we know. So for the jnani, avidya klesha has been eliminated because of shravanam and mananam. When avidya is gone, the other four kleshas, where are they? Because the mother is gone, the children will never come. And therefore the jnani's mind becomes free from the effect of avidya. What is the effect of avidya? Avidya creates me, the subject, the experiencer. And avidya creates the object, the experienced. And when this avidya has gone, the experienced experiencer duality is gone. The subject, object duality is gone. And where duality is not there, there can be no fear. When there is no second person, where is the fear coming from? So this is a very beautiful little karika. Now we look at karika number 36. We will chant. Ajamma nidrama swapnam Anamakam arupakam Sakrit vibhatam sarvagnyam Opachara kathanchanaha I'll just mute all of you. These are all, as you can make out, they are all uh, descriptions of Brahman. So what are they? Ajam, unborn. What is the cause of birth? Two primary, one primary cause, but usually Death. take rest. Death. This is not the really the cause of birth. Karma. Karma. And Ajnanam. Okay. So remember that in the RC1, RC2, RC3, I hope you remember from uh, Tattvabodha, Vishwa, Taijasa, and Pragnya. Agnyanam belongs to which of these three? Agnya. Agnya. Karma belongs to Vishwa and Taijasa. Right? And therefore, Vishwa plus Taijasa plus Pragnya, we say is Ahankara. And when you say that he is free from birth. You are saying he is free from Ajnanam and Karma. 
He is free from the products of Ajnanam and Karma. He is free from Vishwa, Tajasa, Pragnya. And therefore free from the physical body. Therefore what is being said is this unborn Brahman who can never be born, that Brahman is not associated with any Thula Shariram or any Sukshma Shariram. So this, when you say unborn, it's associated with Thula Shariram. And the next word is Aswapnam, dreamless. Not associated with Sukshma Shariram also. And Anidram, not associated with Sushupti Avastha also. Therefore, not associated with Karma Shariram. So this sequence has to be carefully understood. Free from the three physical bodies, free from Vishwa, Tajasa and Pranya, both physical as well as subtle. Therefore, Anidram is associated with Karma Shariram, not associated with the causal body also, not Pragna also, therefore not Vishwa, not Tajasa, not Pragna. Then what is that Brahman? Anamakam, Arupakam, not associated with any name, Anamakam, Arupakam, not associated with any form, Nama, Rupa, Rahitam. And what does this Brahman do? Sakrid Vibhatam, ever shining. So here remember the word Sakrid. We have seen this word long ago in Bhagavad Gita. What does the word Sakrid mean? Where have you seen it in Bhagavad Gita? Nobody remembers. Oh my gosh. Let me see if I can remind you. Okay. Malanirmochanam Pumsan. Jalasnanam dine dine, Sakrid Gitam Basisnanam, Samsara Malanasana. Where does it come from? Mahatmyam. Sorry? Mahatmyam, Gita Mahatmyam. Mahatmyam, which is her third verse. Malanir Mochanam Pumsam, Jalasnanam dine dine, Sakrid Gita Ambasisnanam. Even one Dip in the Gita waters is enough to clear you of, of Papa message. So, generally, Sakrit, the normal meaning is once, right? But here, Shankaracharya says, don't take it as once. Sak because Sakrit Vibhatam means, if you take it as once, it means Brahman shines once, right? So, here he says, you take it as once and for all. So, Sakrit Vibhatam means, Brahman is Sada, always shining, as always shining. Therefore, Sakrit Vibhatam means that Brahman is always shining. And Sarvagnyam, Sarvagnyam means there are two portions in Sarvagnyam. Again, we need Shankaracharya to understand. He breaks it into Sarvag, Sarvag, Sarvagnyam into two pieces. What is the normal meaning of Sarvagnyam? All knowing. All knowing, omniscient. Right. But he says this from the Vyavaharika Drashti. Brahman is Sarvam. It appears as everything in the creation. And therefore, he says in this Sarvagnyam compound, you take Sarvam as equivalent to the universe, Jada Prapancha, and Nyam. That Nyam you take it as equivalent to consciousness. So in general, Sarvagnyam is to be taken as all-pervading Brahman. Not as omniscient Brahman. But in, the, in this particular karika, Shankaracharya says, take it as the all-pervading Brahman, where Sarvam is, indicates the Anatma, Anatma universe. And Nyam indicates the Atma part of the universe. So whatever is available as Atma, Anatma, whatever is available as consciousness and matter, 
remember it is only brahman so very carefully note that he is not talking about two he is saying both are brahman but if you have to make a difference sarvam can refer to anatma and yam can refer to atma and remember there is at this stage of our teaching anatma is a dependent entity not different from atma and therefore he says nopachara kathanchanah na upachara kathanchanah there are any no transactions here at all so what transactions are we talking about so again shankara says take transactions here as nididhyasanam right so very complex construction in this brahman he says in this brahman what is being what is being called out from this particular sentence is in this brahman there is no nididhyasana at all so shankara says that in his commentary he says that gaudapadacharya is saying that for the advanced vedantic student now if you are in gaudapada karikas you are a very very advanced vedantic student and as a an advanced vedantic student what is your sadhana what is the sadhana for an advanced aham brahmasmi nidit aham brahmasmi there is no sadhana at all because okay. sadhana means what sadhana is for what purpose chitta shuddhi chitta shuddhi sadhana means that i still need to attain something yes so sadhana is for attaining sadhya so what he is telling you is that at this stage of your study you have understood that you are brahman right the very sadhyam which you were doing the sadhana for you have understood that i am that sadhyam brahman therefore the sadhana of nididhyasanam is no longer necessary for a meditation for advanced vedantic student once you have understood that you are brahman the sadhyam is there you are the sadhyam itself where is the question of sadhana so very nice point is being made as long as you think sadhana is necessary you are far away from the sadhyam what is the sadhyam brahman if you think you are sadhaka you have not you cannot say i am brahman the person who has completed his study has understood will never say i am doing any sadhana for a person who is a gnani there is no sadhana at all okay that doesn't mean that from tomorrow onwards you all say fine we are gnanis we don't do any sadhana okay you still come to your classes okay um, so acharya ji yeah um so if we are um if we know we are brahman then but still we know it but we might not we we might not be like 100% like and you don't know this so we for in that no. case we still need to do nidhyasana <laughs> If you are not hundred percent sure, then you don't know it. Okay. I mean, it's I, like saying two plus two is equal to four, but I'm not hundred percent sure. You know, it could be three point five, it could be four point five. Do you know that two plus two is equal to four? You don't. Yes. Yes. So when you say two is two into two is four, two plus two is four, you don't have any doubts at all. The same idea here. When I say I'm Brahman, I have no more doubts. Yes. So he's talking about that person who has done Shravanam. Mananam and Nididhyasam, who is in the state of Jnana Nishtha, established as Brahman. Acharya ji, the funny part is that during the week transactions, when we do end up falling into the trap of raga, dvesh, or anger, then all these things remind us. Like it, it comes back. I start smiling. Very important point that you have made during the week. Let us say that you have understood that you are Brahman. Okay, is Brahman is not Saturday morning class. Ji, ji, you are ji. not Saturday Brahman on Saturday mornings at eleven o'clock. Ji, you know you are Brahman throughout. Now, when you are Brahman, do you have a mind? Do you have a sukshma shariram? 
you know sukshma sharyam is also brahman no but as brahman will you say that yes i have got sukshma sharyam no no right no no because bodies don't belong to and even if even if you say it even if you say i've got a sukshma sharyam it is not a satyam sukshma sharyam it is a mithya sukshma sharyam it is Chita. as good as not being there and therefore if you get ragadvesha it is all right i mean i am not saying that as gnani you will not be upset right if you see somebody suffering on the road you will be upset if a, if a friend of yours falls sick you will be upset if a child of yours falls sick you will be upset but are you going to say i am upset or are you saying okay i understand the mind is upset and if you are saying the mind is upset then you have not deviated from no upachara katanjana if you are saying i am upset yes you have deviated from that i hope that the distinction is clear the mind is always going to have emotions you cannot say the mind of a gnani is immune to emotion then you are stone for a mind gnani cannot be said to be a piece of stone right there is only the stone which has no sukshma sharira that's why stone doesn't get upset when you hit it beat it up or break it up i hope i am yes uh, yes sir yes, acharya ji my point was like for example if anything that comes across and suddenly you you impulsively uh, come across uh, normally did, like we used to do get angry get upset you well, now problem know... is that you are defining i in two different ways when you are saying i am brahman there is one i when you are saying i am getting angry there is another i i i understand what i is the hmm. biggest stumbling block for a vedantic student advanced vedantic student but every time you use the word i you must be very clear am i using it in mukhya artha am i using it in gauna artha am i using using it in mithya artha i hope the three yes. arthas are clear yes what is i in mukhya artha oc oc what is i in gauna artha a figurative usage the body Yeah, the mind. The R C, the, the I in the main usage. Mukhya artha to... is the O C. R C. I in the Gana artha figurative usage is R C, and the I in Mithya artha is what? I lost your voice, Acharya ji. What is the I in Mithya artha? Mithya artha that Tula. eventually. Exactly, the I as a physical body. is mithya artha there are three forms that i can take one is when you say i am hungry or you say my hand is hurting then you are using i as mithya artha referring to your physical body if you are saying i am upset then you are using i as a jivatma but knowing fully well that this jivatma is not the osi so there are three three usages the mithya artha is of agnyani right when the agnyani says i am mortal that's a mithya artha remember the gnani can also say that when he says i am mortal he is referring to the body as being mortal that is but not mithya artha that is the gauna artha is the difference clear it's a very important difference the gnani uses the same words but gnani uses that gauna artha in figurative usage the agnyani yes, uses kya usage yes acharya ji thank you so much everybody is clear okay these are very very important ideas and that's why we get confused because we don't know which i we are using okay so here shankara says that for the for the advanced student uttama adhikari there is no question of any kind of meditation at all any kind of sadhana at all while for the mandha madhyama adhikari the middling and the beginning adhikari beginning students a variety of karmas and upasanas are prescribed 
for an advanced student, Nididhyasanam doesn't exist as a separate sadhana apart from the enquiry into the self. Atma vichara is the sadhana. There is no separate meditation required. Why? Because Shankara uses a lot of words. Nitya, Shuddha, Buddha, Mukta, Brahmanaha. What is that? Nitya is the eternal Brahman. Shuddha is what? Pure. Buddha is what? Awareness principle itself. Right? Mukta is what? Always free. So you can either say Nitya, Shuddha, Buddha, Mukta or you can add that Nitya to each. Nitya Shuddha, Nitya Buddha, Nitya Mukta. I hope the difference is clear. Nitya can either be an independent noun or it can be adjective to all the other, other nouns. So Nitya as an independent noun is eternal. Nitya Shuddha means always pure. Nitya Buddha means always nature of consciousness and awareness. And he says, under no circumstances, Shankar adds in his commentary, Kathanchana Kathachin Api. Under no circumstances, any sadhana is required to be done for the advanced student. Why? Because once Ajnanam is destroyed, once your basic klesha, Ajnanam is destroyed, nothing else is required to be done. Because every transaction requires what? Duality. The moment you destroy Ajnanam, duality is gone. Where is the question of transactions? Transactions means you have to have the five factors of action, right? Karta, karma, all those things have to come in. Doer, the instruments, the locus, all have to come in. It's not necessary at all. So for the advanced student, when Ajnanam has gone, there is nothing to be done. Okay. Now we look at Kari oh, much Yes, please. So you mentioned that for the, the only thing the advanced student should do is inquire in the self. Inquire so in the self or always remind yourself that I am Brahm. And, and but that's that's not the same as Nididhyasanam. Nididhyasanam is got various stages. Okay. Right? Once Jnananishtha is achieved, it's like you know. Do you require any specific sadhana to know that you are Jun? No. How do you remember that you are Jun? You don't keep saying morning till night, I'm Jun, I'm Jun, I'm Jun, I'm Jun, I'm Jun. You don't say that, right? No. How do you remember then? It's it's always in my mind, subconsciously. That's what it's called. Jnana Nishtha. Once that is there, you don't even need to remind yourself that I'm Brahman because you know you are Brahman. That is why no sadhana is required. You don't require any sadhana to tell you that you are Jun. Similarly, at that state, of, you will not require any sadhana to tell you you are Brahma. Okay. We look at Karika number 37. Sarva bhilapa vagyatpavigataha Sarva Sarva Pilapa Vigataha Sarva Pilapa Vigataha Sarva Chinta Samutetaha Sarva Chinta Samutetaha Prashanta Sakrajoti Prashanta Sakrajoti Samadhira Chalo Bhaya Samadhira Chalo Bhaya Okay. So, Sarva, you have to break that word up. Sarva Abhilapa Avigataha. Right? The whole thing has to be broken up properly. Sarva Abhilapa Avigataha. Avigataha means free from. Now, the word Abhilapaha, it basically means that by which something is uh, said, right? And what is that by which something is said? Huh? 
how do you say something? Organs. Your organ of speech, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Your tongue. And therefore, here, this tongue is a generalization, upalakshanam, for all the sense organs. And therefore, sarva abhilapa avigataha means free from all sense organs. Now, do you know why? Just by looking at the dictionary meaning, you'll never understand. It's very complex constructions, very complex meanings, and therefore, we require Shankaracharya. So, sarva abhilapaha abhigataha, free from all the indriyas, sense organs, and sarva chinta samutthitaha. What would be the meaning of that sarva chinta samutthitaha? Samutthitaha means free from. All the worries, chinta. Sarva chinta. Right? That is the normal meaning. But Shankara Acharya says, no, no, no. That is not the correct meaning. That by which you do chinta, that should be taken as the meaning of chinta. What is that? Chinta yate anena eti chintaha. What do you do chinta with? With the emotions, the mind. Mind. With the buddhi, the, ah, the instrument of thinking, the mind, right? So here, chinta has to be taken as mind and not as, or mind or buddhi, and not as a thought. Right? Therefore, what are you saying? Free from sense organs, free from mind also. Right? So, Samuthitaha means the one who has gone beyond, the one who is free from. And therefore, you have to take it as the one who doesn't, who is free from the antakarma. And to, you know, reinforce his view over here, Shankara quotes from Shruti, which you should be knowing, Aprāṇohyam manaha shubraha aksharat parataf paraha. Where is that coming from? I kept telling you, you have to revise all your all your Upanishads. Where did we see this? Aprano Yamanaf Shubraha Aksarat Parataf Paraha Mandaka Mandaka Upanishad. And here Aksarat Parah Paraha Aksara is Karna Sarinam. Apranaha is there, Amanaha is there. Then Shubraha means pure, of course. Then Aksarat Parataf Paraha. Aksara we took the meaning of Karna Shariram in Mundaka Upanishad. And therefore, here Shankara is saying that this particular karika has a reference to that particular mantra where you said Brahman is beyond the three Shariram's. Thula Shariram, Sukshma Shariram, Karna Shariram, that is equal to Ajam. And Asapnam is Sukshma Shariram, Anidram is Karna Shariram. This Anidram here is being compared to Aksharat of that mantra. Their aksharaha was karana shariram because, because we said Brahman is aksharat paraha beyond the karana shariram also. Okay, the Shankara therefore says, and because therefore the world is mithya, it is as good as being absent in Brahman, therefore only suprashantaha, the second line of the karika, therefore only suprashantaha, always peaceful. Why? Because when the world is absent, the karanam, the cause for all disturbances are absent. Prashantaha means peaceful. Suprashantaha means completely peaceful, totally tranquil. The next word is Sakrid Jyotihi. And Sakrid has to be given the same meaning that we took earlier. Not once, but always. Once and for all. So Sakrid Jyotihi Ever shining, always effulgent. In the form of what? Brahman is in the form of shines in the form of what? Atma, Chaitanya, Rupena. Right? In the cell, in the in the uh, what do you call uh, form of the awareness I am. And then Samadhi Achalo Abhayaha, the last two words. And Samadhi has 
uh, two meanings which Shankara very carefully gives. He says one meaning is that mind which is completely focused and therefore to a completely focused mind what happens? Sadhana Chatushta Sampati is there. So therefore Samadhi he, remember the Visarga at the end makes it an object, right? Or the subject rather. So Samadhi he is that mind which has derived the benefits of complete focus, which is what sadhana, chatushtaya, sampanna mind. One, one which has got all the qualifications. That is one meaning. And a very interesting meaning he gives otherwise. He says second meaning is there, samyak sarvam adhiyate, that into which everything resolves, that which is the substratum of everything, that is also Samadhi. So here Samadhi can be taken as that into which everything resolves, which is what? Brahman. Brahman. Brahman only. And therefore only Achalam. Achalam means the free from Shadvikara. All the six changes are not there. And Abhayam means fearless. Therefore Achalam Abhayam free from all the Shadvikaras. And because it is free from all the Shadvikaras, remember whenever we say Abhayam in this, in this context, we have to note that Bhaya, fear, is present only when there is a second entity present. If Brahman is always there, there is never any fear. You have to connect both. Achalam means free from all changes. And therefore, nothing else is there. Therefore, there is no fear at all. Again, you can take achalam as a vikriya, the change in the mind. Achalam, achalam as a change in the mind. Achalam means there is no change in the mind at all. So, it does not have fear. Right. To summarize, therefore, this karika, all transactions are absent in Brahman. And this was indicated long ago in the seventh mantra of this Upanishad. The mantra Seventh mantra of the Upanishad, chapter 1, so one word. What was that? Prapancho Pashamam. Prapancha Upashamam. Withdrawal from the world. And therefore, there are no transactions in Turiyam. That is what is meant by Sarva Abhilapa Vigataha. So this first line of the commentary is basically a commentary on two words of the previous Karika. Na upachara katanchana. There are no transactions at all. What is being said is you should know that when you have understood that you are Brahman, there is no puja possible, there is no meditation possible. And SPG says some, something very nice, a very, very catchy phrase he uses. Understanding that no puja is possible in Brahman is the only puja for Brahman. Understanding that no meditation is possible on Brahman is the only meditation on Brahman. No other meditation is possible. Okay. Now, we look at the 38th Karika. Graho na tatra no sargaha. Chinta Yatrana Vidyate Chinta Yatrana Vidyate Atma Samstam Tadanyanam Atma Samstam Tadanyanam Ajati Samatam Gatam Ajati Samatam Nagraha na utsargaha tatra vidyate. So tatra vidyate means in that Brahman. Tatra means that Brahman. In that Brahman, in that Atma vidyate, you should know nagraha na utsargaha. So graha is acceptance. Utsarga is rejection, rejecting. So in that Atma, in that Brahman, you can also take graha, uh, graha as uh, upadhanam, receiving, and utsarga as hanam, rejecting. So what does accepting, receiving, rejecting, what do these three words indicate? Hanam. 
Transaction. Transactions. And therefore, <laughs> the very complex word, grahyona tattra te not sargaha, chinta yatra na vidyate. So, na graha na utsargha tattra vidyate. In that Brahman, there are no transactions possible, which we already said earlier, right? And any transaction requires differences, right? You have to have sajatiya bhedaha or vijatiya bhedaha or swagata bhedaha. Can somebody define these Vedas for me? What is Sajatiya Vedaha, Vijatiya Vedaha, and Swagata Vedaha? Oh, my Chari. Oh, Holy Rashpaji. Sajatiya between two human beings, like male, female. I mean, some is, but same species. Ah, within the Vijat same species. Correct. Yeah. The same. Vijatiya between two different species like dog and human. Okay. And so that within the body, like my arm, my hands, my fingers, my legs. So there are three types of trans distinctions and differences that Shastra talks about between species, within species, and within the same body itself. And Brahman has none of these Vedas. And if none of these differences are there, no transaction is possible. If you want to pick up something, your hand must be different. You know, if you want to scratch your nose, forget the Veda is necessary. One hand is there, one nose is there. So, without these three Vedas, nothing is possible at all. No transactions are possible. Right? In other words, Brahman has none of these three distinctions. No transactions are possible. Then, Chinta Yatrana Vidyate. There are no thoughts also. Right? Now, remember that in Karika number 37, the last Karika. No. What did we say was the interpretation of Chinta? We said instrument of thinking, the buddhi or the mind. But in this Karika, Shankara says, now here you have to change that thing. Here it means the very process of thought. Not the instruments. The very process of thought. And since there are no thoughts in Brahman, there are no transactions. Therefore, yatra chinta navidyate. There are no thoughts at all in this Brahman. And he says, therefore, in Brahman, no types of thoughts are possible. Why are there? Why is that? Why is that being said that thoughts are not present in Brahman? Because Brahman has no mind. Right? When something has no mind, there are no thoughts possible. And ajati samatam gatam is unborn. It is uniform everywhere. It also says, Atma samstham tada jnanam. So in that, because there is no mind, awareness, consciousness, Atma samstham tada jnanam, that consciousness established, is always there. That consciousness here represents Brahman. That Brahman is always there. Ajati, unborn Brahman, samatam gatam, uniform everywhere. He is saying that, this consciousness, this Brahman, continues to exist, is unborn, has never been born and therefore will not die and is everywhere, all pervading time-wise and space-wise. Very, very, very nice little way of presenting Brahman. And here, Shankara, of course, remembers everything by heart. We don't remember. So Shankara says, this word, Ajatim, Ajati Samatam Gatam has appeared before also. Shankara in his commentary adds, these three words, Ajati Samatam Gatam, the last three words of this Karika, they are not new. They have appeared in the second Karika of the same chapter. And therefore he says, you should remember the Linganis, the indicators for um, determining the tatparyam of a text. And that I'll quote it for you. Upakrama upasamharaha abhyaso purvata phalam arthavado patpattihi chalingam tatparnya nirnayam. So here he is saying it has appeared before and it is appearing now also. So he is referring to the one particular lingam. Upakramo Upasamharaha. Upakrama means opening summary. 
or something appearing in the opening. Upasamhara means something appearing in the closing. And he says this three words, Ajatim Samatam Gatam, unborn, all pervading, appears in the beginning and the end as the opening summary and as the closing summary. Therefore, the very Tatparyam, the essence of this chapter is what that that Brahman is unborn. Skarya, Kharana, Vilakshana Brahman. It is changeless, time-wise and space-wise. I hope it's not too much. Any questions? No questions? We have enough time. One more Karika. It's again a tough Karika. So should I go on or should I give you time to digest? Guys, what should we do? They're digesting. Digesting? <laughs> Trying to digest, yes. Okay. So we can stop here and if you want to digest, we can, if you have any questions, I can answer it. We should know, actually we should note that with this 38 Karika, the teaching is really over, right? But the teaching is over for Uttama Adhikaris. And those who are not Uttama Adhikaris, they will face some problems. How to handle those, what those problems are and how to handle those problems are, that is being talked about in the next few, next Karikas. Okay, so with this we'll stop for today. I would really suggest that you guys, you know, revise the whole thing up and then we can come back next Saturday. And we will see what to do. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachate Purnasya Purnamada Purnam Eva Vashate Om Shanti 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 Om Tatsat Om Namashivaya Thank you for your attention.